The stale air suddenly filled up with foul stench. Heavy steps, sounding like horse hoofs, started echoing through the hallways, from no particular direction. Agatha felt a hand grab her by the shoulder. She quickly turned around, ready to fight, only to see Sibylla signaling her to slow down and keep quiet. Unfortunately, with close to 100 pounds of metal armor and weapons on her, Agatha's every step joined the loud cacophony of sounds caused by the presence of someone or something else. <clears throat> then, on the left side of her peripheral vision, she noticed a shadow emerging. Moments before, she is about to get hit and catapulted away by something of terrifying size and power. Two more huge horned figures charged at the party, one from behind and one from the front. Getting bull rushed himself, Arne scrambled to get up from the floor and immediately fired back his signature lightning at the assailant. Realizing his electric powers don't work so well on it, he released his roaring, thunderous magic. In the meantime, Garagek masterfully evaded the charging attack, engaging in hit-and-run tactics right away. Sibylla's crossbow bolts were flying left, right and above her allies, barely missing them, but surgically impaling the terrifying monsters. Focus fire! These are the demons I was telling you about! And leave this one for me! shouted Agatha, pointing her black blade at the huge fiend that sent her flying into the wall. A shadowy, wolf-like figure started forming next to it. Moments later, the demon stopped dead in its tracks. Got you now, freak! said Agatha, with a ceremonious smirk on her face. With a quick sprint, she came right at it and started butchering the legs. Her first couple of swings flashed with extremely intense divine radiance and simultaneously sent forceful shockwaves through the demon's whole body. The shadow hound's teeth were also sinking in deep, all the way to the bone. The freakishly huge demon was helpless against Agatha's overwhelming combination of raw fighting prowess and superb magical powers. While the rest of the party dealt with the other two, Agatha was mercilessly but methodically hacking and slashing away at her own target. It didn't take her long to murder the towering monster. Soon after, Sibylla fired a killing shot at another one, while Arne managed to immobilize the third target as well, sending it back into abyss soon after. Spitting at one of the dead demon's bodies, Agatha said, All right then, these foul freaks are surely not the only ones around here. Let's catch breath first and continue further down below. All right, folks. If you like my very, very sloppy depiction of how a woman talks, um, like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the bell button. Um, yeah, do that uh, because uh, that's what every YouTuber does and that's what I started to do. And so far it kind of seems to work because I'm at 200 subscribers. And thank you to each and every one of you that have subscribed, liked, shared, commented, whatever. Uh, at least those of you who are watching this video right now. And to everybody else who doesn't hear my thanks, still, thank you, uh, regardless. Anyway, let's get into the crux of the matter here. Uh, by the way, if you do want to know the stat block, you can pause, pause the video. This is the monster, basically the three of the demons the our heroes were fighting in the intro of this video. So yeah, there's that. Um... We are going to pull pull this one then, we are going to pull that one then, and we are going to start with this. Now, the Ultimate Smiter uh, is basically a combination of, uh, of three classes, Paladin, Sorcerer and Warlock. 
combined together uh, in order to increase to achieve maximum burst damage I won't say possible but uh, optimally enough op built optimally enough to ensure it's not too one-sided uh, you are you're going to be heavily investing in both uh, warlock and sorcerer while leaving paladin only at, at level 2 <clears throat> Uh, so you will have some other, uh, primarily spells and uh, basically features that enable you to, to not only be a one-trick pony, but uh, obviously this build is heavily, heavily uh, built around, optimized and uh, min-maxed, obviously, around uh, dealing that bursty, uh, smitey damage. So that's why, it's, that's why it's called the Ultimate Smiter. Uh, so we uh, the key features basically we are going to be taking some feats uh, Divine smite uh, hex warrior hex blades curse from the hex blade warlock pact of the blade boon uh, I mean we are a meal character so pact of the blade makes more makes the most sense uh, And also hex warrior is going to work both on the weapon that you are using and the weapon that you are creating out of thin air with your pact of the blade boon uh, then we are going to be having some invocations uh, primarily eldritch smite uh, which should be the first one because it's the more important one at least in my opinion um, and then we are going to have thirsting blade improved pact weapon a and finally a uh, very very important from sorcerer font of the magic um, and for those of you uh, who are a bit more familiar with the sorcerer there's a very good reason why I didn't include meta magics on this list, uh, but we are going to talk about it very very soon. So basically from the video title, from the intro and from what I've already told you, you can assume pretty much uh, with great uh, deal of accuracy and precision what this build, what defines this build. So basically immense bursts of meal damage. Also due to the fact that you are a warlock, you will have a, a lot of levels in warlock. Uh, it has a very potent ranged combat co uh, capability, uh, primarily Eldritch Blast spam, which we, which most of us like know very very well. Boring but effective. Unfortunately, one of the best uh, ranged spellcasting uh, things to do in Fifth Edition Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, loaded action economy. Unfortunately, you kind of have too many things to do on your bonus actions, actions and reactions, whatever. Uh, so. Yeah, I mean, uh, you will be kind of often forced to decide uh, whether you attack right away or whether you postpone your attacks uh, in favor of uh, better damaging, uh, more powerful attacks in subsequent rounds. Uh, you have flexible spell casting, primarily from Font of Magic and uh, obviously Meta Magics as well. Uh, interesting thematic role-playing possibilities. You are combining Paladin, which is like a Holy Warrior type of class, with a Hexblade Warlock, which draws its power from a Shadow Fell, which is kind of like not dark, dark magic, but definitely not something that can be considered holy and uh, maybe even good. Uh, so yeah, definitely interesting stuff there. Uh, also, this build, unfortunately... Uh, because it's a combination of three critically important classes for it to work requires high character level to work optimally unfortunately for those campaigns where which like end before level 10 maybe even before level 5 uh, this build is not going to work but at least from the theory crafting perspective this is a very very interesting uh, concept and an interesting build um, that, that we are going to continue talking about now obviously we are going to take human I kind of uh, think that this build can work with the uh, half elf as well but uh, just that one f uh, one feet at first level that you get right away uh, is enough to sell me on uh, sticking with the human uh, in at least in terms of uh, making it uh, optimal uh, making it powerful right away uh, making it uh, streamlined and all of that stuff obviously get plus two ability scores uh, and also one skill proficiency uh, That's with the variant uh, obviously uh, now a mercenary veteran background. I mean backgrounds are not that important, but 
I think thematically mercenary veteran makes sense. There are other backgrounds that can make sense as well. Uh, I just think uh, for a character that starts as a paladin, then doesn't even take his or her oath. In this case, it's a she. Uh, basically, yeah, you, you're kind of like a type, and a somewhat unscrupulous, um, doesn't um, like Machiavellian stuff like that. So mercenary veteran makes sense to me uh, the most. So you get all of that stuff. Now let's explore the feats. Um, the feats actually uh, one that's really important. Well, I want to say Im really important, but important enough to make it make just like make it red in font in my fancy little word file. Uh, basically, you get a plus one bonus to AC when you are wielding uh, two weapons. Um, you can use two weapon fighting even if the weapons aren't light, so you can use two long swords or two rapiers. You are not uh, strictly mm, limited to light weapons like short swords and scimitars. And the last feature, which is not that useful, but like can be, for example, in certain situations, is that you can draw or stow uh, two one handed weapons uh, when you would normally be able to draw or stow only one. Neat little ability, not that useful in many, many in most situations. Uh, primarily, we are taking it for these two features, and I think that plus one bonus to AC uh, will will really help uh, as well. And don't forget that at first level, even even just the difference between a D6 and a D8 die can make a difference when you are fighting stuff like goblins, kobolds, and I don't know, like stuff that that has like 10 to to 20 health. So every bit of extra damage uh, at the beginning can actually work. So yeah, that's that. Warcaster is another feat, unfortunately, uh, due to the fact that you are going to be relying on a couple of spells that require concentration. Uh, in many cases, uh, you you uh, this uh, feature this feature of the Warcaster feat is going to be crucial to you. I would dare to say that even. In extreme cases, you can go as far as uh, consider the third feat, uh, which is resilient. Uh, and as we all know, concentration uh, checks are uh, the uh, constitution saving throws. So, uh, where's the resilient feat? Oh, uh, there it is. So, basically, resilient feat uh, gives you proficiency with one additional saving throw, and you can take uh, the proficiency in constitution. I don't think this is necessary, I think Warcaster is enough. Uh, but if you want, you can consider this one as well. So let's uh, go over the Paladin. Obviously, two levels of Paladin you don't get much. But you do get the 1d10 addition uh, first level dice. So at first level you have 12 health uh, with these uh, starting uh, ability scores. Um, you get all the martial weapons, all the uh, uh, armors, shields, whatever. You are also proficient in wisdom saving throw which is one of the more common, more uh, dangerous saving throws in the game for player characters. Um, you have Divine Sense, which is always useful to have. You can detect the presence of undead, the fiends, stuff like that. And it goes off of your Charisma modifier, so it's di this feature directly synergizes uh, with your build, because uh, your build is uh, going to have maximized Charisma. So... Uh, yeah, uh, there's that. Um, Divine Sense, Lay on Hands, you will have some limited healing capability. Basically, two levels of Paladin will give you a ten, a pool of 10 hit points that you can restore uh, once uh, during the long rest to your allies or yourself. Not too much. In the beginning, it will be useful. Later on, uh, some other party member, party member will have to take the healing... Uh, a duty in your party did you are not there to heal stuff you are there to actually hit stuff very very hard uh the fighting style unfortunately uh paladins don't have dual wielding um fighting style the only uh well, dual wielding fighting style is a fighter's fighting style ranger's fighting style unfortunately not paladins However, there's another one which I think is really good for your build uh, due to the fact that you are going to be wielding two weapons and you are not uh, uh, wielding a shield at, in that case. 
So take a defense. I think this one is the best. Uh, it's always good to have a plus one to bonus to AC regardless of your level uh, because it kind of scales. It's always that plus one, uh, which also don't forget stacks with your dual wielder feet, which also gives you a plus one bonus to AC. So the combination of these two, uh, well, the fighting style and the dual wielder gives you additional plus two bonus to your AC, which is really not that bad. Now the feature we are primarily, I mean overwhelmingly interested in, well you get some spell casting ability obviously at the second level, uh, but the main thing we are interested in is a divine smite uh, which is the first uh, smite ability, smite feature that we are going to be uh, getting with our character progression. Uh, basically it's a 2d8 at first level and then w one additional 1d8 radiant damage. For each spell a level higher than the first one, uh, with the maximum damage of YD8, the damage increases by 1D8 if the target is undead or a fiend, which in, in the case of our intro story it was a fiend, so our Agatha, the smitress, was dealing a, a heck ton of damage. Now uh, after the second uh, two levels of Paladin we go straight into Shadow Sorcerer. Um, obviously we get some abilities from the sorcerer, we get spell casting, um, we get uh, just like basic spell stuff like that, but let's quickly go over what we get with shadow magic. You get uh, 120 feet dark vision at first level, so basically at the third level of your character you become, you have the best dark vision feature abil ability. Uh, that you can get as a player character where there are ways to get even more but 120 feet is more than enough uh, Also when you reach a third level in in this in uh, shadow sorcerer you can uh, cast darkness spell with two sorcery points Now a darkness spell is not going to be that useful to you uh, Particularly later at the beginning it actually might uh, because when you cast it with two sorcery points uh, you can see through that uh, through the darkness created by the by the casting of this spell um, Obviously if you don't know what the spell is you can pause the video right now and read it for yourself I'm not going to uh, go too much into it uh, So this is a neat ability primarily for the dark vision. We also get at the first level strength of the grave which I mean it's it's great. It's great at the first couple of levels at the third level already uh, you are kind of taking, uh, you're already at the level where you are expecting to, to a situation where you will be taking 10, maybe even 15 damage. Uh, well, that shouldn't be very often at the third or fourth level, but still, uh, the damage is actu actually stacks on top of the DC 5. So, for example, if you take uh, 10 damage, it's a DC 15 charisma saving throw. To stay uh, on one one hit point when you drop to zero hit points again That's why this feature is very very good at low levels Unfortunately as you level up as the monsters you encounter start dealing you uh, More and more damage this this feature is progressively going to get less and less effective uh, Trust me. I've played a shadow magic uh, sorcerer slash uh, combined with uh, Five levels of Paladin, and I actually know from experience playing a ninth level Sorkadin. This feature actually doesn't help too much. I mean, surprisingly, at one point, I actually managed to save a very, very high damage uh, a blow that dropped me to zero hit points, and I managed to stay on a one. Um, yeah, basically, after that, we get Font of Magic at the second level. It's a basic uh, sorcerer feature, basically flexible casting. You can turn these sorcery points into spell slots, or you can uh, turn the spell slots into uh, turn the sorcery points into spell slots. Obviously, creating spell slots costs more uh, sorcery points uh, than uh, you get from converting the spell slots into sorcery points. Uh, regardless of that, we are going to be engaging in a lot of this activity uh, explained in the text that I just highlighted. Um, it's going to be very, very useful to us. Uh, meta magics, uh, which are in most cases when you combine paladin with sorcerer stuff like that, uh, is very, very, very. Mm, how how do I say? 
very crucial, critical. Uh, in this case, not so much. You are starting off uh, with the ability to uh, hit a creature once on your attack action and then again once on your bonus action because you are dual wielding two long swords. Um, yeah, I mean, basically, uh, still taking quickened and twinned meta magic is going to help you later uh, when you uh, switch into the third class, which is going to be a Hexblade Warlock. Quickened is going to help you with your Eldritch Blast when you are in a situation where you can't hit stuff with your longsword, but you must resort to casting ranged spells. And twinned is always good to have, for example. Uh, when, uh, with uh, Booming Blade Cantrip, uh, because it strictly deals more damage than just hitting stuff two times with your basic weapon. Um, so yeah, I would still take these two, but these are not, uh, like, these two meta magics are not the primary driving engine behind the damage output of this particular build, even though it's uh, largely, like, the huge chunk of it is basically just a pure Sorkadim. Um, after that, obviously, we get two ability score improvements, one at 4th level, uh, one at 8th level. And at level 6, uh, we get our Shadow Sorcerer ability, uh, which is uh, Hound of Ill Omen. Uh, it's, a, it's a chunky ability with a bunch of text. Basically, you create uh, a medium Dire Wolf with a, bunch, with a bit more health. Uh, the primary uh, purpose of this wolf, this creature that you create, is that um, yeah uh, the the this this sentence right here? While the hound is within five feet of the target uh, of its target, that target has disadvantage on saving throws against any spell you cast. So any of the spells that you cast while this thing is right next to the target of your well spells has disadvantage. This is going, like, this is one of the reasons, this is, like, the primary reason why Hound of Ill Omen is crucial, it's critical for this build to work as it's intended, designed to be, uh, to be working. Uh, now, after that, obviously, uh, uh, nine levels in Hexblade Warlock, uh, you, every Warlock has an expanded list of spells, we are not, we are going to cover those later. Um, Hex Warrior, the the very very important feature of your uh, hex blade it's going to allow you to use your charisma instead of your strength uh, to swing your weapons um so you are, you are going to be swinging your pact of the blade well later on uh but at the first level when you get this um uh, at the first level of your warlock you are going to be able to swing uh one of your weapons with charisma and one of your weapons unfortunately with strength uh, as you uh, also you get Hexblade's Curse, obviously, bonus action, additional damage, uh, crits on 19 and 20, and if the curse target dies, you, you heal some uh, hit points. Uh, Pact of the Blade is the very very important uh, uh, cog in the in the equation here, uh, because Pact of the Blade basically enables you to create one additional weapon in a hand. So now at this point you can basically just carry one weapon and create another weapon uh, using your what's it I think it's action right uh, yeah action so yeah you just create that weapon and moving back to our hex blade um, where is why is it never okay so let me open it Moving back to our Hexblade, there's one important slide. This benefit, uh, if you later gain Pact of the Blade feature, this benefit extends to every Pact weapon you conjure. So, at level 3 of your Hexblade, of your Warlock Hexblade, uh, now, instead of just one weapon being able to wield it, you being able to wield just one weapon with Charisma, now you can wield both weapons with Charisma, and due to the fact that we are going to be maxing our Charisma ability stat, ability score, uh, it, we, this is going to aut automatically add plus one or plus two to our uh, attack rolls and damage rolls, which is actually going... Uh, primarily attack rolls are going to be very, very important. Uh, obviously, you want to hit stuff more often. And increasing your accuracy, your precision is always a good thing. 
Uh, obviously at level 4, at level 8 you get 2 ability score increases, just like most other classes. At level 6 you, guess you get a Cursed Spectre, it's like, like a neat ability, you create uh, a Spectre, which you can only create one per long rest, once you kill a humanoid. Uh, the Spectre has like points equal to half your uh, Warlock, temporary hit points to Warlock level. Uh, yeah, I mean, you kind of, uh, at level 6 of your Hexblade Warlock, you get an Accursed Spectre, and then on you you can use that creature on top of your, or your Hound of Ill Omen. So, you can kind of become the character that has two sidekicks, two helpers that you can just like summon on command, which is actually really cool kind of role-playing uh, feature as well. Uh, and finally, obviously, Eldritch Invocations. Uh, there are a couple of uh, those which are very, very important. Uh, we, we are going to go over those now. I'm not going to search them by sight. I'm just going to use this. Eldritch Smite. There we go. Uh, Agonizing Blast, obviously, uh, at, at the second level of your um, Warlock, the, you, can, you can take only invocations that are able to be taken at that level. So... Eldritch Smite, Thirsting Blade, Improved Packed Weapon, all of these important ones, uh, they have a limit, um, they are limited by you, uh, re by you being required to be a 5th level Warlock. So, at the 2nd level of your Warlock, you can take Agonizing Blast and some other invocation, whatever you want. Uh, you, for example, you can take Fiendish Vigor or, I don't know, uh, uh, Mask of Many Faces, Life Dr I don't know, no. There are, there are very good invocations here. Basically, I would always take Agonizing Blast at the second level. Um, after that, when you hit the fifth level of your Warlock, you take Eldritch Smite. This is basically your another Smite ability. Very, very important ability. I don't know why I didn't also make it under underlined. There we go, because it's equally as important as Divine Smite for your damage output. Um, so yeah, once per third, when you hit the creature with your Pact Weapon... Uh, you can expand a Warlock spell slot to deal an extra 1d8 force damage to the target, plus another 1d8 per level of the spell slot, and you can knock the target prone if, the, if it's huge or small. So, uh, once per uh, once per turn, uh, when you hit your when you hit a creature with your pack, well, basically two times because you will be having a thirsting blade as well. Um, when you hit a creature with your pack weapon. Uh, you can expand, unfortunately, you can only spend Warlock spell slots, but still, regardless of that, this is going to be very, very important. Uh, you deal extra 1d8 force damage, and force damage is one of the least resisted damage types in game. Now, Divine Smite deals radiant damage, not a lot of creatures are uh, resistant, and even less creatures are immune to radiant damage. But force damage is like even the least, even the lesser resistant damage type... Uh, then uh, radiant damage and one important thing uh, you can stack divine smite and eldritch smite on the same attack so if you hit a creature you can spend your sorcerer your sorcadin spell slot uh, the spell slot you get from combining paladin and sorcerer uh, with your warlock spell slot at the same time, so you hit the, uh, the creature, you spend uh, one spell slot for on Divine Smite, and then another spell slot on Eldritch Smite for, like, uber damage. And in a second you'll see how that's going to be even more ridiculous. Um, and this damage is also not limited to 5d8. It's basically limited just by the level of the spell slot. And due to the fact we are going to be taking uh, uh, 9 levels in Warlock, uh, we are going to be having five, uh, uh, two fifth level spell slots as our, as a warlock, and a fifth level spell slot is basically six d eight force damage, two times, uh, two times per short rest because uh, warlock spell slots are short rest mechanic, um, which is going to be insane when combined with divine smite. Obviously, when you hit the creature for 5d8, and then on top of that, you uh, for 5d8 Divine Smite, then 6d8 Eldritch Smite, and then like uh, 1d8 from your weapon, that's like, uh, what, 12d8, just like basic damage, without any magic weapons or whatever, it's like crazy, crazy, crazy damage.
and then we'll see how that's even like more more ridiculous now thirsting blade is basically your extra attack uh, you are a martial character unfortunately uh, it's a fifth level uh, warlock feature and uh, the way I built this character you are going to get this invocation fairly fairly late but you will get it at exactly the moment when you need it fifth level pact of the blade if you remember eldritch smite requires uh, you to be to use both like both your pact of the blade weapon so you cannot use your other weapon you can only use your pact of the blade weapon and you can use only your warlock spells so now when you have your pact of the blade weapon you can attack twice with that weapon obviously if you attack twice in a single turn you can apply uh, two eldritch smites on top of two divine smites with that uh, with those two hits naturally if you hit with both of those attacks uh, so yeah that's thirsting blade very very important improved packed weapon I'd say I'd say probably this this invocation is probably also well it kind of even if you don't have it it's fine but I mean if for example uh, you don't have to take war cast but you're going to be seriously impeded, like you're going to have, especially if you have a DM who requires you to have a free hand to cast spells. If you are wielding two weapons, you don't have a free hand, unless you are a creature with more than two hands. In that case, just disregard all of this. Um, so, while, yeah, you don't have to take a Warcaster feat. If you don't take a Warcaster feat, for example, which I really think you should take because... It helps with concentration checks on uh, on uh, concentration spells. Uh, improved Pact Weapon is going to help you because you are going to be able to use your Pact of the Blade feature as a spell casting focus, basically uh, enabling you to uh, use use a hand that you are wielding uh, your Pact of the Blade as a hand uh, through which you are casting spells. As all we as we know. Having a spell casting focus in your free hand, basically, that's how you cast spells. Well, spell casting focus or component pouch. So yeah, there's that. In addition, the weapon uh, uh, the weapon gains plus one bonus to its attack and damage rolls. Now, improved packed weapon, you can take it at the third level. So basically, you take agonizing blast at the second, you take improved packed weapon at the third, and then at the fifth, fine, and at the fifth level, uh, you take elder smite. Uh, you can pretty much uh, also exchange agonizing blast for for thirsting blade and then like at the fifth level of your hexblade warlock you have all the three of these uh, invocations which like complement each other very very well uh, having a plus one uh, magic weapon just for free with a single invocation is like really really good so with that said let's quickly go over some of the cantrips if you obviously we, we need uh, well cantrips are primarily from uh, a sorcerer spell list uh, I just combined uh, the cantrips from, from warlock or sorcerer basically they have a similar list of cantrips so booming blade uh, green flame blade your two martial uh, gish meal cantrips uh, you you need a weapon to hit with them they deal additional damage uh, if you don't know uh, here are they you can pause the video and uh, read them yourself basically Additional D8 at 5th level, 2D8 at uh, 11th level, and 3D8 at 7th level. They have a slightly different mechanic. Green Flame Blade can, can hit two creatures, so it's really useful to have in situations where you are... You can hit one creature, and then there's a creature next to it, so you hit both of them. Booming Blade obviously uh, deals additional damage when the creature moves, and also uh, scales with level. So yeah, uh, th that those two are always good to have, and also don't forget... Uh, uh, Warcaster feat enables you to cast spells on your reaction attacks and if you have a weapon in hand and you can cast spells which are cantrips uh, also so uh, if you have a Warcaster feat you if if the monster moves away from you without disengaging uh, you can hit it with extra damage using green flame blade and booming blade this is also why I think Warcaster is kind of Still not necessary, but really, really good to have this feat. It just ties so neatly with everything you have. So, why uh, why do I don't have uh, Warlock spells? There we go. 
So, uh, sorcerer spells are that. Uh, obviously, Eldritch Blast from Warlock, the best cantrip you can have uh, for ranged attack. Um, nothing comes even close to it, especially with Agonizing Blast Invocation, with, which we just covered. Uh, where is the Eldritch Blast? Why don't I see it? Uh, there we go. Uh, 1d10 uh, force damage scales as you level up. Uh, each ray has a separate spell attack. Uh, you add on each spell attack, you add additional charisma if you have agonizing blast. Yeah, basically, if you can't hit stuff with your long swords, uh, you are like far away and there's a huge gap between you and your enemy. Just use Eldritch Blast, that's it. Minor Illusion, the name sells itself. It's an illusion, it's limited by your imagination. It can be only one effect, it can be a sound, it can be an image. It's kind of, if you have a prick DM, this like less useful. If you have a like a less, a more lenient DM, it's more useful. So yeah, uh, judge on your own. Mage Hand, press digitation, friends, really good uh, utility spell uh, cantrips. I'm just going to quickly open all of them if you don't know what they are uh, and read them. Basically, you can take whatever you want. Uh, but these are the cantrips I would personally take for this uh, build. Even though it's primarily a DPS, a damage dealing, uh, uh, a Nova build, uh, you still need something that's non-combat. So yeah, I mean, you cannot just be like, oh, I'll take all the cantrips and just deal damage. Yeah, I mean, that's not gonna work. Uh, that rarely ever works. So yeah, that's that. Uh, level 1 bless. Uh, okay, so paladin spells. Obviously two levels of paladin. We can prepare a couple of paladin spells. Bless always the best spell. Like, yeah, just ri ridiculously good spell. Uh, you will be able to upcast it also uh, with higher levels. Cure wounds, protection from evil and good uh, command. Those are the four I would always consider taking. Uh, to each its own. I would, uh, you can obviously pause the video on these and read them yourself if you don't know. Uh, these are the four I would probably like have in most cases, pr pretty much always. You can take like uh, uh, half your paladin, so one plus charisma is like five, so like six spells at, at uh, w once your charisma is 20. So yeah, these four for sure and then additional two, whatever you want, uh, whatever you want to take. So now we move on to the sorcerer, we take, well... See, this is the problem. Uh, you, we are after taking paladin. We are going to go sorcerer. So, so I mean, we need shield. So we have to take shield from sorcerer. Uh, absorb elements as well. Unfortunately, one uh, some of those spells also uh, are on the warlock's expanded list spell, and we are actually not going to be able to take advantage of that because we already take those spells uh, from sorcerer. But regardless, never mind. Uh, we need shield and we are not going to uh, wait like 11 12 levels just to get that like very very good spell Basically, it's a reaction uh, Once you once the creature hits you you can add plus five to your uh, Armor class until the start of your next turn Absorb elements of obviously as the name says uh, elemental types of damage so lightning thunder cold blah 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 as a reaction you can uh, make your yourself uh, per temporarily resistant uh, to that damage uh, and also depending on of, on the level that you cast this uh, spell at uh, you can deal some of that damage back uh, in terms of 1d6 damage dice now armor of agathis and hex um, armor of agathis is going to give you additional health so you can like always kind of use it even at level like from level 12 to level 20, you're going to be able to use it. So I think it's good. Hex, not so much. But still, like, in a situation where you are casting Eldritch Blast. And you you know you cannot come into the mill range. Having Hex, just additional 1d6 damage is really good to have. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, hold Person, this is the first spell. This is the most... Uh, this is the spell which really, really... Uh, one of the first spells that really pushed this build uh, uh, through. So basically you paralyze, paralyze a feature uh, if if it fails uh, wisdom saving throw. Paralyze, paralyze a hu humanoid. Uh, whole person obviously. Uh, so uh, the creature can repeat the saving throws. But <clears throat> while, the, while that, while that human, uh, human is uh, paralyzed. You have uh, advantage and all hits are critical hits against that creature. 
uh, yeah, it's 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 insane. Uh, so yeah, basically all of your damage is uh, doubled, and for all the humanoids that you fight and need to kill, uh, your Eldritch Smite and Divine Smite become becomes double danger, and your damage output just goes through the roof. Now Shadow Blade is one of those spells that I it's the first it's the title of my first video on this channel. It's one of the spells that I really really like. Uh, unfortunately, in this build, in particular, due to the fact that we are going to be relying on um, primarily v uh, v uh, the, the combination of uh, hex plates, invocations, and features uh, going off of charisma, we can't use shadow blade because you cannot use charisma on your shadow blade. Still, even though. Uh, this spell is really good because you are going to start off with 16 in strength. So yeah, I mean 16 in strength is nothing to nothing to be ashamed of, even at level 20. And if you don't know this, this is like uh, you uh, a bonus action weapon which lasts only up to a minute. So it's a very very combat oriented spell, but it deals a lot of damage. And if you consider a fact that you will have at one point uh, uh, an extra attack. Uh, having this spell on your list, yeah, I mean, it can be good. It deals like 2d8 if you cast it as a second level, 3d8 if you cast it as a third or fourth level. At, at the fifth level or sixth level, it's it's a 4d8 psychic damage. Yeah, it's it's a good spell. Now, Mirror Image and Misty Step are primarily your um, reactionary, your defensive uh, spells. Um... Misty Step can also be used as an uh, uh, offensive spell if you want to reach the creature, but in most cases when some creature grapples you, you use Misty Step to get out. Uh, when, some, when, when many creatures surround you, you, you use Mirror Image uh, to make like copies of yourself and uh, to cause those creatures to hit your copies, your illusions instead of you. Uh, so yeah, like that's like these two spells are really good in that case. Now, level 3... Um, <clears throat> fireball obviously, unfortunately, it's one. It's like you are not a caster. You are there to deal meal damage, but just having fireball on your on on the list like just makes you instantly more versatile, and makes you uh, more flexible uh, in different combat scenarios in terms of what you can even do. Uh, so yeah, I think you. I mean, you gotta take it. Uh, haste, um, one of those uh, third level spells that, uh, the reason why it's not red, the reason why it's not that good, the reason why Hold Person is still better, because Hold Person directly synergizes with your Eldritch Smite and Eldritch, Bla uh, Eldritch Smite and Divine Smite uh, features, doubling your damage. Uh, haste just gives you a plus bonus, plus two bonus to AC, doubles your speed, yeah it can be very useful and don't get me wrong. Gives you advantage on deck saves, your deck saves are shit, so it can help. So that's why this spell, like, it, it can be good in a situation where you you are not really concerned with how much damage you're dealing. You are more concerned with, like, the creatures missing you, your speed being doubled, so you can reach more creatures in less time, or, like, catch somebody or something that's trying to, uh, to get away from you. Yeah, can be useful. Now, elemental weapon. It's um, it's actually a hexplate spell. Uh, this is a third level spell on uh, hexplate expanded spell list, and I think you should take it. Uh, if it's a concentration as well, so you cannot have hold person and elemental weapon at the same time. But in a situation where you are not li really, you cannot cast hold person because you are fighting a non-humanoid. Elemental weapon can come in handy because it deals alternative type of damage. That's the first type. That's the first thing and then it gives you a plus one to attack rolls and it scales with higher level spell slots increasing in damage output and your attack roll bonus uh, Fly blink obviously flies just good ability to fly. Yeah uh, blink is one of those spells It's also on a warlock spell list uh, it's not a concentration, so that makes it like that much better. Unfortunately, it wastes your action, but it's a very, very defensive spell. 
So uh, it, it depends on a dice roll, but you have like a 50% chance to uh, avoid being even a, like the even if avoid even the ability of the monsters that are trying to attack you to attack you. Basically, if you read the spell, you just like switch to another plane and like the monsters like can't can do shit. So yeah, I mean, I think I think this spell is uh, it's it's underrated. This is one of those underrated spells, definitely. Uh, Hypnotic Pattern, one of the last Warlock spells that I would take. It's uh, it's like just on a general Warlock spell list. Um, let me see. There we go. Uh, so yeah, now we need to scroll. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? If you don't know what it is, basically you kind of like Wisdom Saving Throw. You charm the creature and it's incapacitated. Uh, yeah, I think it's good. I think it's like the effect of this spell is good to have on your list. Uh, greater Invis... Um, hmm. Okay, I didn't make it red or underlined, but I think it should be at least underlined. Uh, yeah. It's 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 decently good on its own, uh, just to be like... Uh, able to... Okay, it's a sorcerer spell. So yeah. Um, greater Invisibility, basically a combat buff and a, an, an alternative combat buff. Uh, which sort of works... Well, if you have Blink, for example, then Greater Invis is kind of useless, but, uh, well, it's not useless. So, yeah, I mean, basically you can read the spell. Uh, being invisible means that you are, inv uh, you are an unseen attacker, so all of your attacks have advantage, meaning that you ha have a higher chance of critting a creature and stuff like that. Yeah, it's good on its own. I think it's good enough to have on your spell list. A Confusion, I think... Uh, of the uh, sorcerer's fourth level spells, I think this is the best spell thematically and uh, me mechanically, like uh, what it does to, to take. Like it's one of those spell rare spells on your list that's not going to deal damage, but uh, yeah, it's it's like it has a decent enough effect to cause major mayhem uh, on the battlefield. Uh, and you are you are going to be a fifth level caster, spellcaster. So yeah, I mean, that's about it. Not the 5th level spellcaster, you are going to be able to cast 5th level spells, uh, it's not the same thing. So on a Warlock spell list we have Banishment, uh, again another thing that's not dealing damage, but uh, if you manage to hold concentration up to 1 minute, uh, the target which is banished to another plane never returns. So yeah, I think like the effect of this spell uh, warrants, uh, warrant is good enough, more than good enough to be to be taken, and maybe we should make it underlined as well and save this file now. Dimension door again, another warlock spell that doesn't do damage, but it's really really good to get in combat and out of combat because it's range of 500 feet, and you can just teleport. So yeah, and you can then bring somebody along with you. Uh, it has uh, consequence. It, you can take some damage if you're not careful. But yeah, I mean, you, you're going to be careful. I mean, I, I trust you. I trust you. Okay, level 5 spells. Level 5 spells. Whole monster, you become a god. Well, do, you don't, but still, doesn't matter. Uh, whole monster, you choose a creature. It's a creature. It can be any creature. Doesn't have to be a humanoid. Any creature, the creature must pass a wisdom saving throw or become paralyzed. The spell has no effect on undead, unfortunately. Uh, but at the end of the target's turn, it can make another save and blah blah. So yeah, basically, uh, this spell in, uh, expands your capability uh, of dealing damage uh, to um, to stuff. You know, well, if the stuff is undead, unfortunately, yeah, you cannot hold it. Uh, but all the other stuff, like humanoids, non-humanoids, doesn't matter. You paralyze them. And then uh, deal all, all the all all of those paralyzed creatures. All hits on them are critical hits. So yeah, uh, far step I think uh, is uh, good enough to take uh, instead of all of these other very very high damaging spells. You don't need. You already have fireball. That's good enough. Um, yeah, you can take telekinesis, teleportation, circle. All of these stuff stuff, stuff is good. But you're primarily a, a combatant. And being able to teleport 60 feet uh, for up to a minute on a, on a bonus action every turn is it, that can be insane. Yeah, it is a concentration, unfortunately, so you cannot hold monster and far step. 
but uh, if for example some other party member gives you a buff and for example some other party member casts a whole monster you can just like far step if you are very far away yeah there's stuff to do with far step uh, now warlock spells I would take uh, I think scrying is on uh, no it's not um, so yeah mm, where is it oh there, there we go now I would take scrying or contact other plane um, you'll you have to be careful of the amount of spells you can learn you can only learn 10 uh, from sorcerer and 10 from warlock so yeah I would take either either of these two as a tenth uh, as a tenth spell on your warlock uh, list maybe scry I think scrying is better but contact other plane uh, can be insane as well um, pick your poison doesn't matter now progression in terms of progression there are two ways to progress this character I think if you're playing a campaign which is above level 11 um, so for especially if it goes to level 20 uh, you just for the first 11 levels you go straight Sorkadin uh, just to be able to get the whole monster spell which is going to synergize ridiculously with Hound of Illomen all the monsters are going to have disadvantage on saving throws um, and then after those 11 levels you'll be able to, to take Warlock have even more spell slots uh, to deal divine sm to deal divine damage smite and have like two additional spell slots to deal to deal eldritch smite it's just going to be all out insane uh, now if you are playing a level 10 or less campaign i think there is a, a sufficient reason to kind of do something a bit different instead of going obviously so high in sorcerer you only take three levels in sorcerer why because you still need font of magic sorcery points to be able to turn those warlock spell slots into sorcery points and turn those sorcery points into spell slots because don't forget warlock spell slots are short rest mechanics so you can just short rest get more spell slots short rest again get more spell slots yeah you get the point uh, so two levels in paladin again only three in sorcerer and then five levels in warlock you'll be able to have all three fifth level effect of the blade invocations Elder Smite, Thirsting Blade, and uh, uh, obviously Improved Packed Weapon. Unfortunately, you cannot have Agonizing Blast in that case, because you can only have three invocations. Um, maybe you don't need Improved Weapon in that case. Pick your poison. If your campaign has a lot of flying monsters and none of your party can fly, um, can cast fly and uh, you can't reach those monsters with your long swords because they're just flying 60 feet above you, Maybe don't take improved pack weapon, but I still think you need these two, just in case. Um, so yeah, there's that. Now, Font of Magic Cycling. How do we actually do it? Um, Phil just going to go back to Sorcerer, and so you can kind of be familiar with what we do here. Um, what's the math behind behind all of this madness? What's the method to all of this madness? Uh, so I, th I think you can see everything. Can you? Yeah, there we go. So... Level 20 character, let's just theory craft here. Level 20. Level 20 with, with 9 levels in uh, uh, Hexblade, 9 levels in Sorcery, 2 levels of Paladin. You turn 9 Sorcery points into Spell Slots, that's 1 additional 4th level, 1 additional 2nd level, like 6 and 3 is 9. You're good. You take a short rest. Well, obviously, you turn those Warlock Spell Slots, you, tur you have uh, uh, 2... 5th level Warlock spell slots, because a, a Warlock at the ninth level has 5th uh, level spells, 2 5th level spell slots. Uh, so yeah, that's 9 additional sorcery points. And then again, you turn those 9 sorcery points into uh, 2 additional spell slots, which is going to be uh, 1 of 4th level and 1 of 2nd uh, level. So in total, after, before the first rest, before even the first short rest, be, be, like even if you have 0 rests, zero short rests you can have two uh, fourth level and two second level spells if you don't want to end with uh, only with uh, uh, zero sorcery points if you want to have at least three for your hound of ill, ill omen then in that case you only have one second level because it costs three sorcery points you take one less second level spell uh, but uh, we are not here to take only one we are here to take two how do we do it? We take a short rest. So after the first rest, before the second rest, you get your Warlock spell slots back. 
you have two fifth level spell slots back again and as a bonus action you can turn those spell slots into sorcery points so now you you again have nine additional sorcery points you get the gist uh, you turn six of those uh, into a fourth level spell slot in total you end up with three fourth level spells three additional fourth level spells three additional second level spells um uh, well no three but like two sorry is this a typo Two second uh, second level spell slots and three sorcery points. Why three? Because we need three sorcery points to be able to cast our Hound of Ill Omen, uh, that wolf which is going to give all the monsters that we are fighting disadvantage on those uh, saving throws against a hold monster. Uh, I mean, even even you don't even have to like you can you can keep all nine. I mean, you can cast three. Uh, Hound of Hounds of Ill Omen with with the uh, nine sorcery points. Basically, uh, this is very flexible. This this is just one example of what you can do if you are going to fight like a big bad monster and you know that like you are going to be able you are going to need to like waste all of your resources on just one monster. This is what you can do. This is what you can do. So you take a second short rest. You have your two. 5th level warlock spells back so in total you are you have two 5th uh, level warlock spell slots three additional 4th level spell slots and two additional 2nd level spell slots and three sorcery points in total that's four of 1st level two, five of 2nd level three of 3rd level six of 4th level and five and uh, four of 5th level that's i mean technically that is less than what you can have if you are just a pure Sorkadin, for example. Because a pure Sorkadin of, of 20th level can have like all of these spell slots. Uh, even up to a 9th level. But uh, pure Sorkadin has like no way of dealing so much damage as, as this build. So, I mean, yeah, you kind of have less spell slots. Less powerful spell slots. Uh, but on the other hand, you have like... So much more burst, Nova, no, like supernova paladin damage, uh, than like most other builds out there. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Now, uh, obviously, uh, due to the fact that there's like uh, two types of progressions, uh, if you're playing a campaign which you opt, to, uh, which you you're kind of like forced maybe to take this type of progression, um, you can end up with like basically you 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 will need like to do some kind of juggling. Turn only one warlock spell slot into sorcery points, then turn those sorcery points into additional spell slot. After all this jazz, you end up with three additional second level spell slots and zero sorcery points before the before the first rest. Uh, that is very that's like very good. I mean, second level divine smite is like three d eight damage for uh, ninth tenth level character. That's like really really good. So yeah. Uh, let me close all of these spells because it, is, it just creates confusion. Um, there we go. Where is it? Where is our source? There it is. So, uh, th there we go. So, now you take the first short rest and before the second rest, again, you do all of this, like, juggling. Now you have uh, four additional second level spells and three sorcery points. And then you take uh, a second, uh, you take a short rest uh, and... Um, you take a short rest and get two third level warlock spells back. Uh, unfortunately, also one thing. Uh, that's why I said at the beginning this build is very very requires a high level. It can still work on uh, like on on levels le lower than level ten, but it's like it's not it's not really. Yeah, I mean it doesn't have what this high what what a high level what this build of high level can do. So you for example you don't have a hound. You only have hold person. Uh, you don't have hold monster. So yeah, I mean, you you miss a lot of crucial things you need, and those things you can only get if you're fairly high character level. So unfortunately, yeah, this is a high level character uh, build. So yeah, there's it. Uh, in the end, you end up with like four first level spells, six second level spells, and uh, two third level spells. Which is ridiculous. For example, if you... Even if you, like, take a pure Sorkadin... And multi-class it up to t level 10... You only have, like, 4... 3, 3, that's, like... 
that's like six here. Yeah, you have more spell slots, but again, you can deal a shit ton more damage with this build compared to the other build. And don't get, don't even get me started on pure paladin. Uh, let's see what the pure paladin can do at level ten. At level ten, a pure paladin has four three two. You have four six two. Now three spell slots doesn't seem like much, but it's a lot. It's actually a lot because those three spell slots you can use. I don't know, like, for something else. So, you don't even have to use the smite on it. You can just, like, cast some second level spell. See? So, yeah, I mean, even on lower level, this build, this build, like, compared to just pure paladin. And even, like, stacks up really well to pure sorkadin, which is obviously even, like, better than paladin. Much, much better, as we all know. There's a video also on sorkadin on this channel. You can find it and watch it later. So, uh, after one hour of me talking, uh, I'm going to quickly go over what this build does in terms of damage. So, obviously, it requires some kind of preparation. After all of this jazz that you did um, before the fight and all of these spell slots that you, now you have at your disposal, with your improved packed longsword, with your hex warrior longsword, um, at round 1 you cast bonus action Hound of Ill Omen and then as an action you hold person or hold monster. It's a concentration, all, well, all meal, let me just be clear, all meal hits or crits. Uh, still, if you are a bit lucky and your Hound ends up on a lower initiative than you, that Hound is still 46 plus 3 damage uh, because his, his attacks are also... Uh, meal so he crits as well. So at first round if you're a bit lucky you end up with around 17 damage on average from your hound Now also don't forget I didn't include a cursed specter here uh, you, If you forgot already uh, your otherworldly patron your hex blade at level 6 you have a cursed specter you have a d additional creature which can deal damage uh, Which also has like additional temporary hit points which is like a specter, undead creature. Yeah, I mean, you can even deal more damage with this. But let's kind of keep it a bit conservative. Let's just like, let's just, let's just, yeah. Let's just keep it tame. So, uh, round two, bonus action, hex plates curse. Obviously, I mean, you hit stuff three times in a round. You, you, you're going to deal, every time you hit that stuff, you're going to deal additional six uh, damage with hex plates curse. So, that's like 18 damage. On average if you hit all three times so there's there's a good reason to cast it and also you can heal yourself and stuff like that so yeah at the second round it, already at the second round you end up with 257 magic slashing force radiant <laughs> damage yeah it's a lot of damage obviously uh, your hound is also dealing some of this damage so it's not all magic but yeah, I mean, just disregard all this. And also, this is where you dump all of your, all two of your Eldritch Smites. So you only have two, uh, and you get all of this damage from Eldritch Smite from your uh, Warlock spells, which are packed magic, uh, and also your Divine Smites, which is your like fourth and uh, fifth and fourth level spells, spell slots, which are going to deal twenty d eight uh, damage, uh, or if you hit both times, obviously. Uh, so yeah, there's a and then on round three Unfortunately, you don't have your eldritch smite anymore, but you have your bonus action attack and That also on, only lowers your damage output, but by, by, by like 40 So it's not a lot so uh, like you are dealing a lot of damage and for like round four five six All up until you burst and burn all of your uh, spell slots you deal around 200, then like 190, 180, 150 uh, damage because all of your hits are crits. And I mean, obviously, again, uh, this is all theory. If we go back to uh, to the spell, to the whole monster, whole person spell, which is like the crucial uh, ingredient of this build, um, it 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 enables the monster to repeat the saving throw. At the end of each turn but let's be realistic if the monster survives 257 damage potential damage 
I mean, you can still miss. The hunt can still miss. But, I mean, you have advantage. The hound has advantage. Every hit is a crit. So, you have plus 12, plus 11 without any magic weapons. Without just like pure class abilities, class features. You are very, very guaranteed to deal this much damage at level 20. Uh, very, very guaranteed. This is not some like... Oh, but I only have 50% chance. No, you have, a, you have like, depending on the monster's AC, you have a fairly reasonable chance to deal damage. Um, so, yeah, we, like, yeah, I mean, you can deal a, sh a shit ton of damage, again, uh, if the monster uh, at the subsequent turns saves the Wisdom saving throw, then in that case, you are kind of out of, out of luck. But still, I mean... If you can deal just basic damage and uh, due to the hex splits curse, uh, you 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 crit on 19 and 20, and uh, yeah, I mean, screw it, you deal damage. So yeah, this is about it. Uh, I just can't help myself. All of my videos end up like more than one hour long lately. Um, I just I try to talk less, but I just can't. Um, so yeah, that's about it. If you still liked this video and you kind of managed to go through whole one hour and almost 10 minutes by this point. Um, well, I mean, at this point, it's, you might as well drop a like, share, uh, comment, subscribe, hit the bell button, get notified in the future when I upload new video. Obviously, if you watch this video again for the full hour and 10 minutes, uh, you kind of, kind of found it interesting. So, come back again. With that said, Min Max Munch King out and uh, see you soon.